let's see here. I want to make sure I'm not bumping into my mic stand here. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get this stream officially started. So, hello, Lit. Welcome to the stream. Today, we're going to be going to the Safari Zone. How exciting. Of course, first, we have to finish up some uh, trainers that we passed by on the way to Fuchsia City. Kind of skipped by a whole bunch of them because the, the path between Lavender Town and Fuchsia, so many trainers to deal with. But we're going to go ahead and finish them up now. Let's see. What is our team situation? Oh yeah, and in the last stream, we finally got the experience all. So that's going to be kind of nice to have. Oh, look at us. We Only one of us has reached level 30 so far. And... The next gym leader... Has level 50 Pokemon. Probably gonna wanna do some extra training somewhere before we go fight him. Alright, Elmo. Elmo is... Marowak. Cool. Sam and Max the duo. Ash to the Pikachu. Me the Nidoran, Erica the other Nidoran, and Lucky the the uh, Vulpix, who read one back in Celadon City at the Game Corner. That was pretty cool. So let's see here. Let's focus on Lucky, because Lucky needs to get to level 35 so that he can learn Flamethrower. And as soon as Lucky learns Flamethrower, he'll also get evolved into a Ninetales. Have you heard of the legendary Pokemon? Yes, I actually have. I mean, in-game we've heard of one so far. There was mention of a shining bird flying to the islands to the south. By the way, in case anybody is wondering, I do not plan on having any of the legendary birds on my team. They're strong, but I'm not really a fan of them that much. And it largely has to do with them being weak against lightning. For being all legendary and stuff, being weak against lightning is kind of an issue. Don't, don't, what? Oh. That was some unfortunate many hits. All right, two birds against one. I like how agility apparently does not have an animation. It has a sound effect and that's it. Makes me wonder if they intended there to be an animation. By the way, we're totally going to get a Farfetch'd on my team at some point. They are an underrated Pokemon. Sorzance is awesome. We will look for a Farfetch'd after we get through... Koga. Why? Why'd I lose? Because your Pokemon's health reached zero? The three legendary Pokemon are all birds of prey. An interesting phrase there. Birds of prey. Of course, that basically means that they are carnivores, and they hunt prey. But... I cannot think of a single bird that doesn't hunt prey. I mean, even chickens hunt worms. Like, seriously. Does anybody know of a vegetarian bird?
Well, I suppose in the context of Pokemon, Farfetch'd is a vegetarian bird, or so I assume, is always carrying around that plant. Then again, Farfetch'd is a duck, and duck tend to eat fish. So who knows? The Pokemon games rarely ever talk about what Pokemon actually eat. You know, outside of candy made by the trainer. Like for certain, Ekans eat Pidgey eggs. Alright, let's try this, but better. TMs are on sale in Celadon, but only a few people have HMs. I, I've, we've got a couple of HMs. They're not all that great, except Fly. Fly is awesome. Ah, if only Confused Ray had worked against that Farfetch'd. That's the thing when it comes to luck. The computer tends to have more luck than you do. You will hit yourself in confusion all the time. Your opponent, not so much. Okay, gonna want to switch to Ember because takedown is already a little bit inaccurate without the sand attacking. You know, it's almost a shame we didn't get a Pidgeotto on my team. It's kind of a nice Pokemon. There was one in... Vermilion Forest. Or Viridian. Viridian Forest that we could have caught if we found one. I feel like had I been able to get one on my team... Let me try that again. I feel like if Red had managed to catch one, it would have been totally on my team. At least for a bit. Of course, we eventually did catch a Pidgeotto, but that by that point we already had a full team and didn't really have any room for it. Alright, this battle went much better for Lucky. Lucky was not so lucky against that Farfetch'd. I don't care if it takes a while to go through all of those experience share messages, it clearly helps. Oh, bummer. Man, Red's picking up a lot of money like this. All these trainers. How much money you got, Red? 39,000 Poke Dollars. That, that's a lot. Teach Pokemon moves of the same element type for more power, says the bird trainer. Only the legendary birds have elements. My bird Pokemon should be ready for battle. Why are there so many bird trainers around here? I mean, they're more threatening than bug catchers. But still, it's kind of redundant. We need variety. There's 150 Pokemon or more to see. Surely we could have some other monsters to fight. Oh, you just had to get in a quick attack, huh? Kind of think of it, given that Lucky is receiving all the attention right now, trying to get to level 35 I feel like I'm not going to get much use for at least the first half of this stream 
And yet, watching Lucky fight somehow makes me feel stronger. It must be the experience all. Wonder how that works. Hmm, Ash Chu or Erica? I guess we'll get Erica in there to finish off these birds. It's too bad that I wasn't the learn that the one who learned Thunderbolt. But I'm going to learn something even cooler than that. Alright, when you throw two Pokemon in, experience all is definitely spreading thinner experience points. Hopefully you're not missing out on any experience by doing that. Yeah, you can growl all you want, Fiero. Doesn't affect electric attacks. Also, it is weird to think of a bird growling. I want to hear a parrot growl. Not ready yet. They need to learn better moves. I guess they kind of do, don't they? Oh boy, using up hyper potions now. Kind of shows how far along in the game we are. Aside from the max potions, hyper potions are the strongest potions in the game. In fact, I don't think you can even buy max potions. You need to use TMs to teach good moose to Pokemon. Well, you should tell that other bird trainer over there the same thing. It's interesting how sometimes these trainers have related messages. Hmm, Confused Ray is one of my favorite attacks in these games. There's nothing like guaranteed confusion. I feel like though that Confused Ray was nerfed in later games. Not for a while, mind you. I want to say more so the newer games than the older games. Also, we're getting a whole lot more use out of Takedown than I thought. Given that I generally don't like recoil attacks, it, it's definitely getting some mileage. The recoil is not as bad as I thought. Also, hello there, Jamie123R. Welcome to my stream. We're dealing with some trainers in between... Lavender Town and Fuchsia City and then we're going to be heading to the Safari Zone. You know, we got a new person in the audience. I'm going to show off my skills. Send me in. I can totally handi handle a uh, Pidgeotto. Let's see. First things first. Let's boost that defense a little bit. Admittedly, I don't have a great selection of attacks. Unless I can connect with Horn Drill, I'll give it one shot. 
Nope. Alright. I'll try double kick. Fighting attacks aren't good against flying Pokemon typically, but it's also partly a normal type, which is weak against fighting. So despite the fact that it is not very effective, that's just an error on Generation 1's part. It's actually neutral effective. Alright, I feel a little more confident ramming it with my horn than kicking it. Ah, good. Level up for me. Not good enough. I can't help but notice that you didn't have any attacks that use TMs. You didn't have any TM moves there, Mr. Bug or Bird Keeper. Given that you were just talking about TMs, I would have assumed that you would have some. You have some HMs, right? Pokemon can't ever forget those moves. Yep, because you don't want to screw yourself over and forget something important. Hi! The wind's blowing my way. Which way would that be exactly? Would that be towards us? Or towards you? Oh, you forgot to recover Lucky. Send an Erica again. Actually, hold on. Ash Chew. Send an Ash Chew. Oh, mirror move. First time we've seen that come into play. Mirror move, basically, the Pokemon mimics the attack that it was just witnessing, or something like that. Basically, if Ash 2 growled, it would have growled. If Ash 2 used Thunderbolt and it survived, it would have used Thunderbolt. Not entirely sure how that works, come to think of it. How does. A Spearow use Thunderbolt. I mean, I guess technically, if you have the ability to use Mirror Move, you technically have the ability to use any attack in the game. Which brings up some interesting situations. For example, using Tail Whip when you don't have a tail. Or using Horn Drill when you don't have a horn. On a related note, eventually I'm going to be learning Mimic. I don't know how good or useful Mimic is, but it has similarities to Mirror Move in that it would allow me to use a variety of different attacks. And I'm kind of wanting, wanting to find out how good it can actually be. If it's not so good, I'll have a chance to learn something else and replace it. Jamie is asking if, since Pidgey's got a tail, can it use Tail Whip? Yeah, it could definitely use Tail Whip. I feel like Tail Whip had a different name in Japanese, because my sister there can learn Tail Whip naturally, and she don't got a tail. My sister being the Nidoran female. The wind turned! Yeah, yeah, excuses, excuses. I'm beat. I guess I'll fly home. Alright, see ya later. Are you, are you gonna fly now? Or are you just too embarrassed to use it in front of somebody? Are you, are you, like, trying to fly on your own? 
You kinda need a Pokemon to fly. Alright, I think there's a couple more trainers left. And then we'll head over to the to the Safari Zone. Oh, didn't even notice you. Okay, so several trainers still. And thankfully, none of them are bird keepers. So now we get to have a bit of variety. My cute Pokemon wish to make your acquaintance. And of course, by acquaintance, she means battle! Oh, come on! I mean, even if, if, if even the regular trainers are going to have birds, then why even have the bird keepers? All right, there's some variety. Huh, almost out of confused rays. Oh, that was unfortunate. Hopefully you don't take 17 points of damage. Nope, okay, good. Yeah, I, I wanna send, uh, send me in again. That thing's weak against kicks. I can totally handle that. Gonna kick that? Uh, gonna, gonna try, gonna try to kick that coin off your head. You think that coin is organic? Given that Meowths produce money, it would be interesting th to think that money is actually organic in this world. Although then again, paper money, right? It is weird to think that... You know what, hold on a sec. Let me boost my defense here. It is interesting to think of money as being organic. Because typically when you think money, you think like... Change. Metal. But... Then we have paper money. And paper is organic. Ah! No. Nope, not gonna let you get away with that. Okay, I maybe I'll let you get away with it a little. Uh, that 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 blast on my eyes kind of hurt. Okay, you know what? I'm done. We can let somebody else in. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself. Uh, one Santa black, one Santa attacked on my eyes, and it's like, ah. Uh. Have you guys ever had sand in your eyes? It's not fun. If not sand, surely you've had an eyelash in your eyes before. Wow! 
You totally won! Totally! You have to make Pokemon fight to toughen them up. You don't say. Gee, I would never have thought of that. Has four badges. Alright, I think we haven't fought you yet. Well, I need to return to buy some more Hyper Potions. Go ahead and Hyper Me up, please. I'd like to think I can get in one more fight before we head back to the Pokemon Center. Wow! Your badges are too cool! Nah, I disagree. They are only... Just cool enough. Oh boy. Nope. Lucky's not going to take part in that. Decisions, decisions. And red goes with the easy decision. Perhaps a good choice. I don't think my, uh... My sister would appreciate being crit hit by a tail. I mean, tails are supposed to be huggable, not painful. Mind you, that tail doesn't look like one that would be huggable in the first place. Hello, our wings. Not enough. Not enough what? You got those batches from gym leaders. I know. I wonder if we ever fight any trainers who also have badges. Do you want to Pokemon with me? That... That sounds uncomfortable... Oh! Mr. Genesis, is that you? I dare you to use sing. Or you know, you could just keep hitting yourself in confusion. Oh, never mind. Oh, minimize. Hey Mr. Genesis, you're just in time. That Clefairy just went tiny like you. Eh, too bad it couldn't last. Maybe that's how Mr. Genesis got small. He used Minimize. For anybody wondering, Mr. Genesis is a rave fox that I know on Second Life. And sometimes... He gets tiny. Nobody knows what happens. I'm sure he's tried telling us, but the thing of it is, he can only speak Ray Fox. No English, just Ray Fox. Words like Maruf and Marf. Or when he's tiny, me reap and reap. It's over already? 
Oh, I guess that battle's over already. I don't know anything about Pokemon. I just like cool ones. Yeah, that's that's kind of uh, partly why I have the Pokemon on my team that I do. Because Marowak is cool. And Doduo... Kind of neat the idea of it having two heads. Oh, we're out of hi Hyper Potions now, that's right. But there's only one trainer left. Might as well finish it and then head to Fuchsia. Sure, I'll play with you. That's an interesting way of thinking of Pokemon battles. Like it's play fighting. Alright, I guess I'm gonna try going in against this again. Oh yeah, and it's Redita, so it has to be purple. Incidentally, this is not the only game that had a Pokemon colored wrong. Generation 2, in particular Gold and Silver, there's a Pokemon called Spinarak, which is normally green. It's supposed to be green, but Gold and Silver has it colored purple. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's wrong. Oh, Vulpix. Well, it's too bad Lucky is a little weak at the moment. Could do a test of which Vulpix is better. Oh well. What are you going to know? Drat. Hmm. Nothing like being burned. Well, yeah, of course, of course, Jamie, it would know a fire attack. But it doesn't know takedown. Takedown was taught to Lucky. Alright, level 31. Four more levels to go, and you get Flamethrower. You know, it's too bad... TMs don't come into play more often. Like, it'd be neat to see computer trainers taking advantage of TMs. I mean, it sometimes happens. But very rarely. Like, I'm pretty sure Rattata can also learn Thunderbolt. I feel like it can. It can learn some sort of elemental attack. Oh! You little brute! Well... That's not nice. I wonder which is stronger, male or female Pokémon? Well, as a matter of fact, there's an easy way of finding out. Me and Erica are basically the same Pokemon, but one of us is a boy, and one of us is a girl. I think it should be obvious which of us is which. So, as far as pure attack power, my attack is 50 and Erica's attack is 39. At the same time though, in regards to defense, my defense is 33. And Erica's defense is 39. Also, Erica's got a few more hit points than I do. So, there's your answer, pretty much. Alright, we're done here. Let's go ahead and head back to Fuchsia and kind of start exploring. Make our way towards the Safari Zone. That's gonna be fun.
And Jamie says Radita can learn Thunderbolt and Water Gun. Thank you for that information. I kind of thought it was Thunderbolt. Interesting, you can also learn Water Gun. It is weird the sort of things that Pokemon can learn. Alright. You know, we haven't talked to a single person in this town yet. Let's start exploring. You can't win with just one strong Pokemon. It's tough, but you have to raise them evenly. Yeah, that's what we've been trying to do. Although you are kind of wrong on that matter, it is possible to win with just one Pokemon. The catch is you'll want some other Pokemon to learn some HMs, because otherwise you're not getting anywhere. If you're studying Pokemon, visit the Safari Zone. It has all sorts of rare Pokemon. That makes the Safari Zone sound less fun. Studying? I mean, unless you mean filling the Pokedex. Because that's a good place to fill the Pokedex. There's a narrow trail west of Viridian City. It goes to Pokemon League HQ. The HQ governs all trainers. Oop, hold on a sec. There. That is an interesting thought. The Pokemon League is basically the government. I mean, you don't hear of any other government stuff going on. You don't hear of any presidents or mayors or anything. Well, maybe mayors, but certainly not presidents. Instead, you hear about the Pokemon League and the Elite Four and the Champion. Although I don't think the Champion has any special... special, um... privileges, role-making sort of thing. They're just a really strong Pokemon trainer. Safari Zone Warden's Home. Also, we got Wardens. Um... Yes. Ah, howie ho ho! Ifi ha fa hi ho! You said a mouthful. Old Pokemon merchandise. It's one of those collector dudes. This requires strength to move. We're gonna be able to learn strength somewhere around here. I'm the fishing guru's older brother. I simply love fishing. Do you like to fish? Sometimes, sure. At least in Pokemon. Grand, I like your style. Take this and fish, young one. And there's the good rod. Interesting, we can actually encounter the super rod along the way to the good rod. I guess it depends on which trail you take to get to Fuchsia. Hello there, Red. How are the fish biting? Well, Red is, is a mute character, so I'll answer on his behalf. Fish have been biting pretty good. We fought, caught a few Pokemon. We do not want the good rod, by the way. We have the super rod. The good rod is not that great. At least I'm pretty sure that the Super Rod and Good Rod... Let me try it again. I'm pretty sure the Super Rod... How do I wear this? I'm pretty sure the Good Rod doesn't catch anything that the Super Rod doesn't. That is what I was wanting to say. So, just get rid of the Super Rod for the time being. Huh. The experience all is a stackable item. I wonder what would happen if you had more than one experience all. More importantly, what happens if you try using it as an item? Psychic Oak talks to you, is what happens.
missing no glitch the experience all. That's an interesting idea, Jamie. Safari Zone's warden is old, but still active. All his teeth are false, though. I, I do not look forward to the day that I start losing my teeth. Bill files his own Pokemon data on his PC. Did he show you? Yes. Yes, he did. Hmm? You've met Bill? He's my grandson! He always liked collecting things, even as a child. Okay, so uh, Bill's family lives in Fuchsia. That's kind of interesting, because in Generation 2, Bill and his family moved to Goldenrod in Johto. I'm curious if Ash 2 does a special animation like this. Because he does a special animation when you jump downward from a ledge, but from the left? Yeah, okay, yep, there he goes, bouncing side to side. It doesn't matter which way he's facing. If he's on top of a ledge, he has a special animation. Kinda neat, that. Pokemon Paradise, Safari Zone. That sounds like a cool place to be. A paradise? Heck yeah! What do we have here? Are these... Hmm... No? Maybe? Kinda? They look like red recolors. Like strongly. Only difference is red actually has his eyes open. We nicknamed the warden Slowpoke. He and Slowpoke both look vacant. That's not nice. Slowpoke came in, but I couldn't understand him. I think he's got a speech problem. Oh, it's that guy, huh? What's up with that guy? As if I didn't know. Slowpoke is very knowledgeable about Pokemon. He even has some fossils of rare, extinct Pokemon. Wait, so that merchandise was fossils? That is a weird thing to display. Is that a picture of him? Who knows, it's not interactive. Fuchsia City. Behold! It's Passion Pink! And now it's Fruit Punch Red. Safari Zone has a zoo in front of the entrance. Outback is the safari game for catching Pokemon. Wait, what? Safari Zone has a zoo and in the back is the game. Okay, so the Safari Zone is in fact the entire area starting from here. I, I tell you what, I don't think being part of the zoo would be a paradise. Where's Sarah? I said I'd meet her here. My gosh, if I, if we wind up finding Sarah like on the other side, wondering where you are, I'm gonna facepalm. But I'm gonna facepalm carefully, cause I've got a poisonous horn on my head. Name Slowpoke. Friendly and very slow moving. And now I've seen one. Red's seen one. The Pokedex has seen one. What is the point of seeing a Pokemon like this when it doesn't even give information to the Pokedex? This should be counted as free information so you don't have to catch it. I mean, I suppose it's kind of useful if, say, you want to find out where to catch a Slowpoke. But we also did the same for Bill's Eevee evolutions. And... We can't catch those anywhere. Area unknown. Heck, we can't even catch an Eevee anywhere. There's only one. 
Where is Slowpoke out of curiosity? Oh. They're apparently found in the areas we passed. I guess it's a Pokemon you can fish for. Name Chansey. Catching one is all up to chance. I get it. It makes me wonder how all the Nurse Joys in this game managed to get one. Because there's one in every Pokemon Center. Name Voltorb. The very image of a Pokeball. Except it's orange instead of red. That's how you can tell the difference. Actually, why isn't it red? Unless it's actually orange. No, I'm pretty sure Official Art has it red. So that's another miscolored Pokemon. That item ball in there is really a Pokemon. Consider that foreshadowing. Name Lapras, aka the King of the Seas. Really? I always thought of Lapras as being female. Did you try the Safari game? Some Pokemon can only be caught there. Yep, we're gonna be finding one there. Alright, we need Hyper Potions. Bunch of them. I know we already have Ultra Balls. Revise, Full Heals, Super Repels, Full Heals. We should buy a few of those. Nothing like being able to use an item to cure any status effect. Except Faint. Doesn't work on Fainted Pokemon. Do you have a Safari Zone flag? What about cars or calendars? Yeah, we can't actually get those in this game. So don't tease us! Did you try X-Speed? It speeds up a Pokemon in battle. So you're basically spending a turn to ensure that your next turn goes first. You might as well just attack when you have the chance. It's so pointless increasing your speed. No, Jamie, I don't think Lapras is gender neutral. I'm... I don't think. I'm fairly certain it can be any gender. Name Ammonite. A Pokemon that was resurrected from a fossil. Interesting. Would not have expected to find a fossil Pokemon here. So that's Ammonite. I think... Red chose the Dome Fossil, so it'll actually get Kabuto. Name Kangaskhan, a maternal Pokemon that raises its young in a pouch on its belly. That's actually a really cool Pokemon. I would love to have one of those on my team in this adventure. The problem is, part of what I like about this Pokemon is Dizzy Attack. It learns Dizzy Attack in this game, but it's just a regular attack in this game. Whereas in later generations, Dizzy Punch can confuse Pokemon, and I want that to happen. So I'll be looking for a Kangaskhan when I play Generation 2. Safari game! Pokemon U Catch! Anything else out here? I think we're about done exploring out here. Yep. I'm gonna say we're done exploring out here. Let me check my notes though real quick, because there could be an item hidden somewhere around here. Hmm. I don't think I took good enough notes. 
Oh, you're leaving, Mr. Genesis? Alright, thanks for visiting. I'm pretty sure re-reap means goodbye. In fence area, hidden items next to obvious sign and an obvious dead end. Oh, that was for the... where all the bird catchers were. Let's remove that from my notes. Alright. I think there's only one item, hidden item of worth in the Safari Zone. Hi, is it your first time here? Well, technically for this adventure, yes. Safari Zone has four zones in it. Each zone has different kinds of Pokemon. Use Safari Balls to catch them. When you run out of time or Safari Balls, it's game over for you. Before you go, open an unused Pokemon box so there's room for new Pokemon. That's a probably a good idea. Let's head back to the Pokemon box in the PC. Make sure we actually have room to catch some Pokemon. Because I know that box is getting kind of full. Hmm, actually, hold that thought. I want to check up on the Abra that we left at the daycare. It needs to gain 8 levels, and then we can level it up into a Kadabra to add to the Pokédex. I think we'll be coming to that gym right there sometime in this stream. Assuming we don't spend too much time in the Safari Zone. Because we're definitely going to want to gain a few more levels before we take on Koga. And that gym that we passed there should be easy enough. Your eyebrow has grown a lot. My level has grown by 10. And we don't have room for this Pokemon. Well, that was a complete waste of time. We need to store a Pokemon before retrieving a Pokemon. Derp. Alright, well, let's take care of the box situation first. How full is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's a question of will we catch more than 5 Pokemon? Because that's how much more this box can hold. Hmm. Nah, I'll worry about it later. I think we'll... I think we can... I think. That's all I can think of to say is I think. Alright, now let's retrieve that Abra. Scroll down, please. Thank you. We'll retrieve the Abra. What level will it be at? Level 17 at this point? If it's gained 10 levels, it evolves at level 15. Maybe level 16? Shouldn't take too long to give it a quick level up to get in the Pokédex. Again, we're not going to be completing the Pokédex in the game. That's asking far too much. But I want to fill it up as much as I can, especially in the case of Kadabra. Really want a Kadabra in the Pokédex, because its information is interesting. Oh, now it's gained... Oh, it gained a level while we were messing with the PC. That means it was really close to gaining a level when we came here the first time. Which means now it's going to take more effort just to get it to level... What level? Didn't mean to use teleport, but okay. 
We, I guess. So it needs 719 experience points. And alas, it still only knows teleport. This looks like a job for some simple Pokemon training. Let's go out here. We haven't been out here yet. I think there's actually a few trainers out here. Yeah. And we encountered one. Whoops. Let's not do that again. I always check every grassy area for new Pokemon. I was really hoping that this trainer was in the grass. Of course it's a bird keeper. Why wouldn't it be a bird keeper? Oh gosh, drill pick. That's dangerous. I think Sam and Max are going to be able to learn that relatively soon. Oh, Fury Attack. Please don't hit too much. Okay, good. Gonna take a bit of effort to get that level. Dang, if only I had remembered about the box situation to clear up a space first. I was probably only a few experience points away from gaining a level. And there's Mirror Move. Darn. Well, the sign an Abra real quick just to get some more experience. And then, Ash 2. We're not going to fight any of the other trainers in this patch of grass, by the way, because... Well, we don't want Elmo to miss out on any experience. Elmo needs experience too. Elmo is going to be vital to the upcoming gym. The Fuchsia gym, that is. Tish. And that's all you have to say about that, huh? I wish I had a bike. Yeah, riding a bike is kind of nice, I guess. Not really necessary if you can fly. Oops. Actually, having wings actually kind of makes riding a bike a little bit cumbersome. That's quite some wind resistance you got there. Unless you lean forward enough and spread your wings in just the right way so as to not cause drag. Alright, let's see what we can get out of this area. Hopefully some better Pokemon than that. Let's make this easy. I hope I'm right about... Kadabra's Pokédex entry in this game. I want to say the entry I'm looking for was only in one game. And I think it was this game. Pokémon Yellow has some very interesting and unique Pokédex entries. For example, the fact that a Charmander's tail makes a sound. This is the only game that references that.
Hmm. I could go back and store this experience all while we're out here. It would make things go a little bit faster. However, I guarantee that if I did that, I would completely forget to retrieve the experience all later on. I keep having Rez switch to Erica because of Double Kick, only to realize Erica doesn't know Double Kick anymore. I'm the one that knows Double Kick. Okay, how much experience left? Hundred forty-eight. Okay, we're actually making good progress. A few more battles should do it. Especially if we can find a Fero in here. I am halfway certain that there's a Fero in here. Unless that's the other versions of this game. Could be a Dodrio in here also. I wonder what other Pokemon we should leave at the daycare. Oh, I was right! There is a Fero here! Alright, this'll get Abra leveled up. Yep, there we go. Alright, put my controller down so I don't accidentally cancel this. And suddenly, Abra has a spoon. Don't ask me where the spoon comes from. All right, let's check out that Pokédex entry. Kadabra, the Psy Pokémon. Oh, this isn't the Pokédex entry. Oh well. Many odd things happen if this Pokémon is close by. For example, it makes clocks run backwards. That is, that is definitely weird. In regards to the Kadabra entry that I was hoping we would find, one of the Pokedex entries in one of the games says that one day a kid was sleeping in his bed and then he woke up the next morning turned into a Kadabra. This is an actual thing that one of the Pokemon games says. It's really interesting and really random. I can actually relate though. I mean, I woke up nearby Viridian City, turned into a Nidoran. That was a weird day. But it's been an interesting adventure since then. Actually, hold that thought. Let's deposit somebody else at the daycare. Who should we put in the daycare? Well, who evolves at the lowest level? Radita? Let's go with Radita. 
No, maybe not Rattata. I feel like we could easily catch a Raticate somewhere. What's a Pokemon that we won't be able to catch an evolution very easily? You know what? We'll figure it out later. We're about to go into the Safari Zone. There's probably going to be some evolu evolved Pokemon there. Jamie says the Kadabra entry is in Pokemon Sun. Really? Because I'm pretty sure that I've heard of this entry like years ago. Let me let me see here. Pokedex entries. If it uses ability, special closest size, possess strong. Silver Spoon... There it is! Okay, I found it. It's in Fire Red. It says, It happened one morning. A boy with extrasensory powers awoke in bed transformed into a Kadabra. Somebody actually drew a picture of this. Recently, in fact. I'm gonna go ahead and share that because it's kind of interesting. First, I'll share the link in the chat. And just in case the chat record ever goes away, let me share the screen. Hold on, let me fix this. Don't do that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Come on. Thank you. I need to recenter this. For context, I want to include the top of this. This is a pretty interesting thing. It's like somebody has taken the mantle of this kid who turned into a Pokemon. It's like a retelling, an interpretation of that Pokedex entry, and it's kind of cool. I'll leave that on screen for the moment. Let me also try to show the link on the video. This is like all doing this live. And there is the address. If anybody wants to like screen cap that and copy that down. There is your option. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this information off and we shall continue the adventure. Really interesting picture though. Oh, and uh, meanwhile Ashu is trying to get Red's attention. Alright Ashu, let's just move on. Let us now head to the Pokemon Center. That is not what... Hold on, let me try this again. First off, that was not the way to the Pokemon Center. Second, we're not going to the Pokemon Center, we're going to the Safari Zone. I do not know what I was doing. I blame Red. It's always Red's fault. I'm just his Pokemon. Welcome to the Safari Zone. For just 500 Poke Dollars, you can catch all the Pokemon you want in the park. Would you like to join the hunt? Sounds fun. That'll be 500 Poke Dollars, please. We only use a special Pokeball here. Red received 30 Safari Balls. We'll call you on a PA when you run out of time or Safari Balls. Okay, in regards to time, it's basically steps. Every step you take is, I don't know, a second, we'll say. 
So we got 500 steps. Take a step. Now we're down to 499. And we got 30 balls. That sounds uncomfortable. Trainer tips. Press the start button to check remaining time. Uh, you already showed, showed that off. So, yeah. Rest house. There's going to be several of these. And we're just going to go ahead and visit these. We'll be taking more than one trip through the safari zone. I'm catching Pokemon to take home as gifts. Pretty cool gifts. Where did my boyfriend Eric go? Excuse me a sec. Careful facepalm. It is hard to facepalm when you got a horn on your forehead. Under normal circumstances, I still have a horn, but it's on the, it's in the middle of my muzzle. Because normally, I am a raccoon dragon, as far as you know. Alright, so here's how the safari zone works. You don't battle the Pokemon, rather you throw rocks at them. This is a paradise? And you just keep doing this in the hopes that eventually you get lucky. I, I, I actually like the Safari Zone. It's kind of neat how you go through here and try catching Pokemon in a different way. But at the same time, it's a pain. Because this happens. Almost all the time. Oh hey, a Nidoran! There's actually a whole bunch of these guys here. That's pretty cool. Why couldn't I have been a Safari Zone Nidor in? Instead, I wound up in Route 22-ish somewhere, and all of a sudden, here comes this kid with his Pikachu, and they paralyze me. I mean, granted, having a rock thrown at you probably wouldn't be any better. Actually, I take that back. Having a rock thrown at me probably would be better than getting paralyzed. Besides, it's not just rocks we're dealing with. We could also have food being thrown at us. Free food! You can't complain about free food! Well, apparently that thing can. Center area. North is area two. There is, by the way, one Pokemon in particular from this place that I plan on having on my team. It won't get on my team until after we deal with Koga. But for certain, it needs to be on my team. Uh, we're going to be finding a whole lot of items here, too. Hopefully Red has space in his inventory. Oh my goodness, it's a Chansey! There's a pretty good chance that that thing... Heh, <laughs> a pretty good chance. There's a pretty good chance that that thing's going to run immediately, so just throw a ball at it and hope for the best. You missed. Okay, throw a rock at it. And it makes it angry. So here's how throwing rocks and bait works. Bait makes the Pokemon- <gasps> Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You actually caught the Chansey? What? Okay! Um, Chansey! The egg Pokemon. A gentle and kind-hearted Pokemon that shares its nutritious eggs if it sees an injured Pokemon. Um, dang. That was, um, did not expect that to happen. Cool. 
saving that. My gosh, saving that. Uh, so... Ooh, TM-37. What is TM-37? It contained Egg Bomb. That would be for Chansey. Yeah, Jamie, I'm as surprised as you are. In fact, I'm probably more surprised than you are. I couldn't catch an Execute, but managed to catch a Chansey. Anyway, what I was trying to say earlier is bait makes a Pokemon less likely to run away, but it also makes it hard to catch somehow. Because, you know, somehow a Pokemon that is sitting there eating is easier to miss than a Pokemon that is dodging rocks. A rock makes a Pokemon easier to catch, but it also makes it more likely that it's going to run. Alright, execute the egg Pokemon. The heads attract each other and spin around. So they're magnetic? There must be six heads for it to maintain balance. With a spinning, you mean? Hmm. Alright, so that's two Pokemon we caught here now. Ooh, a full restore. That, like, recovers your HP and status effects. Alright, found another rest house. How many did you catch? I'm bushed from the work. Well, so far we caught two. I caught a Chansey! Hey! Us too! That makes this all worthwhile. Um, I, gu I guess. Not really the Pokemon we're looking for, but it's certainly a bonus. Phew, I'm tired from all the fun. You need to be a kid. Alright, there's also cube bones here apparently. Don't need one of those. This lonely Pokemon is following us. can't follow us. Trainer tips. The remaining time declines only while you walk. I assume it's a technical limitation of some sort. We couldn't actually have an actual timer for some reason. I mean, sure, games like platformers have timers, but maybe the timer issue comes into play because... I don't know. Doesn't work too well in a turn-based battle. item right over here. Boy, this is a big empty space. Okay, there wasn't an item right over there. Okay, this was a waste of time. And by time, I mean steps. I'm thinking of a different spot, apparently. Trainer tips. Win a free HM for finding the secret house. Ooh. Ah, King is gone. Not gonna have one on my team in this game. Like I said, gonna wait until Generation 2, but it's still worth trying to catch if we find one. Trainer tips! Pokemon hide in tall grass. Really? You're gonna tell us that now? I think we kind of figured that out at this point. Zigzag through grassy areas to flush them out. Oh, can't go that way. Gonna have to remember to come back to get that item on the island there. After we learn how to surf.
Area 2. Okay, this is the path I was looking for. Trainer Tips. Zone Exploration Campaign. The Search for the Secret House. They're making kind of a big deal out of it. Oh, we're almost out of time. Can we make it back to the grass? Find one more thing before time runs out? Found a new arena. And that's cool. I already got one, though. Actually, this is the area where we're going to want to find that Pokemon I want. But we'll start looking after we finish exploring the Safari Zone. Ding dong! Time's up! Your Safari game is over! Uh, which one of us? There's a whole bunch of us out here. What's that? The boy with the Pikachu following him? Alright. Sorry, Red. Did you get a good haul? Come again. You bet it was a good haul. My gosh, what is it a good haul? It was only two Pokemon, but that one. Oh, boy. Alright, we're going to head back to the Pokemon Center to deposit a couple of items. Because there's going to be more items to find, and it's going to suck if we make it all the way to the secret house. Only to find out that Red's backpack is full. TM37. I'll, let me make a note of that real quick. TM37... Egg bomb. I'm not really sure what to do about that Chansey. I mean, really have no intention of actually having it on my team. But then again, I didn't think we would be able to ha have the option. It would certainly be interesting to have a Chansey on this team. I'll have to think about it. I mean, I've got my team all planned out for the adventure. After, we'll d after we deal with Koga... I'm gonna be getting Scyther, that's the Pokemon in the Safari Zone, Farfetch'd, and Ponyta. Gonna get a Lapras from Sylphco, and then we'll be getting our final three teammates around Cinnabar Island. There's really no room for a Chansey in those plans. Can we ride our bike here? Okay, good. Let's make our way back to where you were, Red. Three more Pokemon that can fit on that box. I'm probably going to have to change boxes. I'm hesitant to do that, by the way, because I feel like opening the extra slate or the extra save slot for a second box uses up more of a charge on this game's battery. I mean, a lot of people have said how their games have died, even Generation 1 games. And it's like, well, this copy hasn't died. And my theory is, it's because I'm not filling up that many Pokemon on it. More Pokemon means more power to keep the save data. 
Area 3. East is the center area. Anything of interest over here? Well, there's a Rhyhorn. So there's that. Well, that was easy. Expected it to put up more of a fight. Rhyhorn, the Spikes Pokemon. A Pokemon with a one-track mind. Once it charges, it won't stop running until it falls asleep. Sounds like a bundle of energy. Maybe I could retire here. You think the Safari Zone would let an anthropomorphic Nidoran dragon live in the Safari Zone? Surprisingly, Parasect is one of the harder Pokemon to catch. No oh boy, this grass has a lot of Pokemon in it. Hmm, Tangela. Don't got one of those. I'm, I, I meant to scroll down. Typically, I don't use the bait option because it just makes it harder to catch. I'd rather risk them running than just feed them and then never able to actually do anything. Get off that bike. It's going to be easier to move. Max revive. That's nice. And a max potion. It's interesting how this place has the evolution music. Tossing rocks at Pokemon might make them run, but they'll be easier to catch. I hiked a lot, but I didn't see any Pokemon I wanted. Using bait will make Pokemon easier to catch. No, it doesn't. It just makes them stick around longer. Hmm, <clears throat> Nidorino. This definitely seems like a nice place for a Nido to live. Rocks aside. You know what, though? I got opposable thumbs. Anybody try throwing a rock at me? I'm going to catch it and throw it back at them. I already read that one. Of course, this is assuming that I stay a Nidoran. in. I'm probably going to go back to being a raccoon dragon after this adventure is- Oh, there's the Pokemon! There's the Pokemon I want on this team. Gonna take some effort. Oh, there it goes. One way or another, Scyther is gonna be part of my team. I want a Scyther on my team because it's cool. I could wait until Generation 2 to have a Scyther on my team. Think of it is Generation 2 as an evolution to Scyther. That would be Scissor. But I'm not really that interested in Scissor. Alright, what is TM40? Skull Bash. No. Gonna sell that. It's a two-turn attack. 
He spent the first turn not attacking, and then the second turn hits hard, but you already wasted a turn not attacking. Now there is a point in the games where Skull Bash, I'm pretty sure, raises your defense as well. But let me check real quick. Yeah, Generation 1, it does not raise your defense. Skull Bash is more worth it than other generations, where using it also raises your defense. Oops, that is not a bike. So sell that real quick. Just don't want it. It is an easy sell. Uh, let's just go ahead and head back to the Safari Zone. I don't think there's going to be too many more new items in there. Alright, get back to where we were again. It's too bad we don't have Surf. We'd be able to get to the area where we want to get to faster. In less steps, that is. Yeah, this place really is a Nido paradise. There's more Nidos than any other Pokemon. I can't remember what awaits us in the secret house. It is either Strength or Surf. I want to say strength or surf. No, I think it's surf. I think it's surf. It does ultimately doesn't matter. We're going to be getting both pretty much at the same time. Go to the deepest part of the safari zone. You will win a prize. That's the plan. Walk back upwards, please. Darn. You can keep any item you find on the ground here, but you'll run out of time if you try for all of them at once. It's a good thing we got the money to come here multiple times. My Eevee evolved into a Flareon, but a friend's Eevee turned into a Vaporeon. I wonder why. I, you don't know? I mean, in order to evolve, you have to use an evolutionist or an evolution stone. I mean, I think it'd be pretty obvious that, oh, well, if he got a different one, maybe he used a different evolution stone. You know what I like about the Safari Zone, aside from the interesting gimmick and the rare Pokemon? It's the fact that you don't have to take the time to send out one of your monsters and then run. Trainer tips, the secret house is still ahead. I think we have enough steps to make it. Request notice, please find the Safari Warden's lost gold teeth. They're around here somewhere. Reward offered, contact Warden. I wonder where their gold teeth might be. Red found gold teeth. I am 
I'm carefully face palming myself again. Did how did the person putting up that sign not notice those teeth? I dropped my controller. Maybe they weren't there before. Maybe it was like an episode of Rugrats, and one of the Pokemon carried around and had human teeth for a day. TM32. Double team. We can just buy those. Uh, Alright, let's see here. There's gonna be a hidden item here. One of them here. There it is. I think that's the only hidden item that we need to find. Rather, I think it's the only one here. Ah, <sighs> finally! You're the first person to reach the secret house. Oh, really? How long has this promotion been going on? I was getting worried that no one would win our campaign prize. A apparently a while. Congratulations, you have won. You don't have room. Gosh dang it. Like I said, you can just buy those. HMO3! That is definitely Surf. Yep. Pokemon will be able to ferry you across water. And this HM isn't disposable. You can use it over and over. You're super lucky for winning this fabulous prize. Is it luck? Or is it just the ability to actually walk through the whole place? It's probably luck, considering it how long it's taken for me or anybody to get there. Out of curiosity, can any of us learn surf? I don't think so. It's gonna be a while before we can take advantage of this. Yeah. Alright, back to the previous section. I'm gonna hunt for Scyther now. I know that we're not gonna actually put Scyther on my team for a little bit, but, you know, as long as we're here. We've seen one. Surely we can catch one. And who knows, maybe we'll find something else that's cool. I want to say that there's something around the odds of 4 out of 100 that we'll find a Scyther. So, let's see here, that would be... 1 in 25 chance. Alright, well, just need to find 25 Pokemon and we'll bound to get it. I know that's not how odds work, but it's the nice way of thinking of those odds. I mean, heck, we caught a Chansey. Kangaskhan is pretty rare, too. Alright, before we do anything else... First off, I think it'll be faster just to fly to the Pokemon Center. Go ahead and store some items. That way, when we start acquiring more, we don't have a full inventory. So, 
So deposit HMO3. Oh, we gotta deal with that gold teeth. Let's deal with that first. Red gave the gold teeth to the Warden. The Warden popped in his teeth. Thanks, kid. No one could understand a word that I said. They apparently did not realize that you were missing your teeth either. I couldn't work that way. Let me give you something for your trouble. And there's HMO4. HMO4 teaches strength. It lets Pokemon move boulders when you're outside a battle. Oh yes, did you find Secret House in Safari Zone? Well, your teeth were basically right by it. Which, thinking on it, is kinda lame. I mean, they could have spread these out differently, but no, they decided to just give you both of them practically at the same time. Both of these HMs, that is. If you do, you win an HM. I hear it's the rare Surf HM. Did not mean to t talk to you again. Can any of us learn strength? If any of us can learn strength, that's awesome. Strength is a really good attack. Elmo can learn strength. Do I want Elmo to learn strength? Possibly. Leer, Bone Club, Tail Whip, and Headbutt. I mean, Headbutt is pretty good too. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of one of these. Let's get rid of Leer. I mean, Leer and Tail Whip do the same thing. It's just kind of funny to have them both because redundancy is funny. But between Leer and Tail Whip, taking advantage of the fact that you have a tail is better than staring angrily at your opponent. Pretty sure we can't actually use strength outside of battle yet. Oh! Maybe Elmo can! Interesting. Which which gym leader did we beat to be able to use strength? Ooh, rare candy. That'll be nice to use. I still feel like flying is faster. Why does this Pokemon Center have to be hidden up on a ledge? You have to go the long way around to reach it too. Maybe you can buy max potions somewhere. Oops. I want to say max revives can't be... I don't, I'm not entirely sure now. I feel like there is some sort of healing item that you can't buy anywhere. And it's too bad we can't use strength anywhere else right now. It'll probably primarily be used in an upcoming dungeon. And Elma will be off our team by then. Yeah, Jamie, I think you're right. I think Mask Potions can be bought at the Elite Four. I feel like ethers are a rare thing too, but I can't remember for sure. Ah, there's that Pokemon again. There's that Pokemon again.
Unlikely as it seems, there actually is a rare chance that a Pokeball that you throw will just be all, okay, you can catch it. Regardless of the odds. However, don't have all day. Or an infinite supply of Pokeballs. There are times where I've definitely gotten lucky with a Pokeball throw. For example, that Chansey. I feel like my odds were not supposed to be that good. It just... It just was. It just happened. Oh yeah, yeah, I've I've gotten really lucky with a ball throw that was not supposed to work. It's a rare chance, but there is a chance. This is where the Scyther was, I'm pretty sure. Just to save a bit of time, not have to ride the bike back here every time we fail and run out of time. We're gonna create a save file and then we can just reset and reload the game at this point. I know, right? That Chansey, oh my gosh. I, I almost feel obligated to have it on my team. Because how many people actually get to train a Chansey? Not very many! Alright, Scyther. Start by just trying to to get lucky. Nope. Throw a rock. And it ran. Fun fact! The sound of Rhyhorn is the exact same sound as a Charizard. I don't have a Charizard, so I can't demonstrate this, but trust me, it's the exact same sound. Secretly, Rhyhorns want to be pretend dragons. Now, I don't even think it's slowed down. I think it's the exact same sound effect played at the exact same speed. Or if they are played at a different speed, they're still very close. have a Chansey on this team, there's a place where we can get the soft-boiled TM. I don't know if Chansey learns that naturally or not, though.
Hmm. Looking at the execute reminds me of its bright in red and blue. Where one of the eggs, seeds, whatever you want to call them, was gigantic. Like, huge. Like, easily triple the size of all the other egg seeds. And they're supposed to be all the same size. It's interesting the little errors that these games have. Chansey can learn soft-boiled naturally in Gen 2 and above, but not Generation 1. Alright, thanks, Jamie. Hey, look, a pincer. Didn't think I'd find one of those. Pincer basically being Scyther's counterpart in this adventure. Kind of like how Pidgey has... Spearow as a counterpart, and Caterpie and Weedle. Not interested in having a pincer, but that would have been cool to add to the decks. You know, as I'm running around out here, it occurs to me that... Oh wait, never mind. I was about to say, it occurs to me that the Pokemon we left at the daycare is probably leveled up enough, but we didn't do that. Alright, next Scyther that we find, Red, you're gonna want to start by throwing a rock. Maybe it doesn't run immediately. Maybe it only runs on, like, the second turn or something. Of course, there's also the strategy of maybe, like, throwing bait and then follow up with throwing a rock. I feel like the options would cancel each other out, but it might be something to try. Speaking of trying, just to save time, like I said, just gonna reset so Red doesn't have to ride all the way back there again. And that thing definitely likes to run ASAP. Usually. Yeah, it might be worth trying to throw a bait a couple times. Just to keep it around longer. See if we can get that lucky ball. Try throwing bait at that. While Kangaskhan is eating. Here's a fun question. Is it the mother or the child that is eating? Missed the Pokemon. Well, that was a bad idea apparently. Just made it harder to catch. How do you miss a Pokemon that big? I'm assuming it's big, actually. Might not actually be that big. A lot of Pokemon seem like they're bigger than they actually are. Like, for a long time, I thought that Charizard was, like, bigger than your average person. But no, Charizards are basically as tall as a teenage kid. Of course, part of the reason that I thought Charizard's must have been big was because of the anime. Because for a while, the only Charizard you saw in the anime was those giant Pokemon at the end of the SSN 3 parter Gonna say the episode was Island of the Giant Pokemon. 
Of course, none of the Pokemon in that episode were giant. Let's try it again. None of the giant Pokemon in that episode are really that size in reality. But still gave it the impression of Pokemon like Charizard being larger than life. Eventually, there will come a point where this Kangaskhan just decides not to run after having a rock get thrown at its child. Actually, one would expect it to actually charge at you if you try attacking its child. But then again, maybe not. Taking your child into battle is typically not a... ...smart thing to do as a parent. Actually, here's a fun thought. If you actually catch a Kangaskhan, that means you're actually able to have two Pokemon in the same Pokeball. But then again, we also have Pokemon like Execute, where you have six individual po Pokemon in the same ball. Alright, Scyther. I start by throwing bait. Missed. Alright, throw a rock. Rare Pokemon like those are just not worth throwing bait at. Then again... Unless we get that lucky ball, it depends on how long it sticks around with that bait. Hmm. How many balls can we throw before you stop missing? Or it runs. Apparently throwing bait doesn't keep them around for very long, unless you throw a whole bunch of bait. What happens if you throw three baits? Gonna make the Oz pretty dang- oh, no, that was a waste. Try to. Wonder what that bait is made of. I mean, any and all Pokemon here will eat it. Okay, and there's two. Jamie says the bait is made out of rice. Well, being Japan, I guess so.
Although, I personally am not a fan of just regular rice. I like rice a -roni, or like Mexican rice. Basically, if, if you fry it, it's good. Now, we're not gonna get much of a chance to do anything in those Scyther encounters. So just slot balls at them and hope you get lucky, Red. Might as well sing the same for the King of Scones. The bait and rock mechanic is definitely an interesting one. But it's not really that useful on the Pokemon you really want. Nope. Oh, time's up. Reset to save it. I have roughly 30 minutes or left of stream time. Hopefully, I'll be we'll be we'll be able to get that Scyther before time is up. For certain though, not going to be able to do anything else outside of the Safari Zone before the stream ends. Unless, you know, I happen to get a Scyther on my team in the next 5 minutes. That would leave plenty of time to do other stuff. If I have the spare time after catching a Scyther, plan on going to that gym in Saffron. The gym where you can find Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan. You know what we haven't seen here yet? Taros. There hasn't been any Taros. I guess Taros are not catchable in yellow. Which is ironic considering Ash caught 30 of them in the cartoon. Yeah, the fighting dojo. Either that or Taros are just in a different area of this place. Didn't really look up Taros' location. Not really interested in training one. Hmm. I know it would be counterproductive for my search for Scyther, but we could also travel down to that lake by the entrance and see if we could get a Dratini. That'd be a cool Pokemon to catch. Well, maybe what I'll do is, after catching a Scyther, head down towards that pond and use the rest of the Safari Balls looking for a Dratini. That sounds like a plan.
Ah, you again. Take this. Actually, you have to wonder if they do take the ball when they run. I mean, why can't we just go over to where the Pokemon ran away from and pick up the wasted ball? What makes a Pokeball only good to be used once if it breaks open? Actually, never mind. I just answered my own question. They break when the Pokemon breaks out. It is weird to think that a Pokeball can be so fragile considering that their entire purpose is to make sure your Pokemon stays in the Pokeball. Interesting conspiracy theory there, Jamie. And I wouldn't at all be surprised. Making the Pokeballs weak so that you have to buy more. They just don't make them like they used to. I wonder who sells Pokeballs? Who manufactures them? Is it Silvco? I would assume that it's Silvco, considering they're also involved with the Master Ball. They must make a lot of money off of Pokeball sales. My phone is ringing. Why is my phone ringing? I assume it has something to do with supper. Hello? Fast food again? Um... Well... I guess they're a queen. I have pot pies. I've got three at my house right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright. My grandparents handle supper. Except in this case, apparently I'm the one handling supper because I'm the one with the pot pies. Also, because I was on the phone, couldn't just reset. Now I am able to reset because I have both hands free. I wonder what is the most caught Pokemon. 
I say that after looking at Jamie's comment there about all the youngsters catching Rattatas. What is the most popular caught Pokemon? Not just the most popular, because obviously there's going to be obvious popular choices. But what about the most captured? I assume Pikachu's got to be up there. But Pikachu is not available in every game. Which is interesting considering it's the mascot of the series. You know, it makes more sense that Team Rocket would want to capture Pikachu in other regions. There are no other Pikachus in those other regions. Okay, let's hope for luck. That was not luck. Uh, technically speaking, Scyther would be easier to catch in Generation 2. It's not in a Safari Zone, you actually battle it and weaken it like any other Pokémon. But the thing of it is, I'm just not interested in Scissor, and I feel like if I had a Scyther in Generation 2, I would be obligated to evolve it. You know, even despite the fact that I'm not evolving myself in this adventure. No, Jamie, I'm pretty sure that uh, Johto does not have any Pikachus. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only way you're catching a Pikachu in Generation 2 is if you go around Viridian Forest after beating the Elite Four. Interestingly, they're at level 3. Pokemon levels do not scale up in Kanto after beating the Elite Four. Rather, they're at the levels you would expect them to be during this adventure. Which almost makes it kind of worthless to go catching Pokemon in Kanto because... The Gym Leaders are still at a super high level. They're not scaled down to what they are in this game, they're scaled up to after the Elite Four. So if you go lo hunting for those Kanto Pokemon, you're gonna have to do some training if you want them to be able to compete against gym leaders in Kanto. Oops, no, don't, don't catch that, don't catch that, please do not catch that, please do not, Oh, reset. When I play Generation 2 though, I'm definitely going to go ahead and catch those Kanto Pokemon. It'll take some work to grind them up to snuff, but I want them. There's that the interesting thing is there's actually some Generation 2 Pokemon that can only be found in the Generation 1 area. For example, Houndour. I want to say Houndour can be found nearby Celadon City, and it's like. What? Where the heck is that Pokemon during this adventure? I'm gonna try something stupid. I'm gonna try holding down B. Well, it's not running. I'll give it that. Oh, there it went. Yeah, Jamie, I think so. I want to say... 
Actually, Larvitar can't be found until the final, final dungeon. Mount Silver. When you're on your way to the final, final battle. Which is unfortunate, considering that the final battle pits you against level 70 Pokémon. And Larvitar... Not sure what level Larvitar is found, but it can't be much higher than level 30. Oh, you're playing Heart Gold right now, huh? It's a, it's a pretty cool remake. It, 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 generation 2 was my favorite generation, so seeing it redone on a DS is pretty cool. I only wish that the, they hadn't gotten rid of the berries and swapped them for apricorns. Berries were more useful. Yeah, berries and apricorns would be nice. Kurt's Pokeball thing is pretty neat mechanic. Being able to build your own Pokeballs. The variety of Pokeballs is nice. Instead of just your traditional, regular, great super ultra. <sighs> I feel like I used up my luck on that Chansey. Worst case scenario, might have a chance on my team instead of a Scyther. Too bad I can't save state. I'm playing on a physical copy of the game, so save stating not an option. You know, I've been here a while. I feel I feel like having a change of scenery. There. You know what would be funny is if the change of scenery allowed Red to catch this Kangaskhan. Nope. Would have been funny though. Actually, going to run out of Pokeballs on this attempt.
Hmm. If I don't get a Scyther in this stream, I think my game plan for the next stream will be to go to the fighting dojo, just for the sake of having a break up from this place. Maybe also do some training on Cycling Road, and then come back here. Alright, last Safari Ball. And there it goes. Ding dong, you are out of Safari Balls. Your Safari game is over. I say 10 more minutes. I will continue this search for 10 more minutes and then I'm gonna have to call it. You know what? Screw you, King is gone. Here we are. Ah, uh, what do? What do? Well, that's what I call some fast food. All right, well, bait apparently was not going to help. If only Scythers were a little bit more common. If only. Actually, I kind of wonder if they would be easier to catch if they were at a level, a lower level. I mean, that's typically one of the things that helps with catching Pokemon normally, is if you find a Scyther at a lower level, or a Pokemon at a lower level. I think. I want to say that because I think it's like dependent on how much HP they have, or maybe it's just the percentage. I don't know. I'm kind of grasping at straws right now. I'm oh, I'm considering heading to a different section where the Scythers are rarer, but they might be at a lower level. Then again, they might be at a higher level, given how rare they would be. So this might actually just be the best spot to look for them. At this point, I don't care about the King of Scones, I just want to find a Scyther. It is interesting, by the way, to see Pokemon running away. I think this is the only location that actually happens.
Not counting attacks like Roar and Whirlwind, which basically blow you away. I'm kind of glad that Pokemon don't normally run away. It would be a pain trying to catch them if they just ran while you're whittling down your health. Again, Whirlwind and Roar kind of complicate things when you find Pokemon with those abilities. And then there are the roaming dogs in Generation 2. Those guys like to run away. The difference with the roaming dogs is that the damage you cause is not recovered when they run, unlike other wild Pokemon. So eventually, if you encounter them enough, you're bound to get them weak eventually. Alright, how close? 65 steps? All right. It's amazing how common these Kingaskons are. I would not expect to have been able to find so many. Oh, it didn't run! Interesting. Probably still won't catch it, but... No, not even close. And then we caught it. Cool! Ah, King is gone, the parent Pokémon. Raises its young in its belly pouch. Won't run from any fight to keep its young protected. Um, I disagree with that statement. Saving that. No. Nah. I feel like ending on that note. That is a good note to end on. So as soon as time runs out, we'll go ahead and start ending this stream. Definitely don't need you anymore, King Ascon. We got one in the Pokedex. Can we find one more Scyther before time runs out? Nope. Oh well. Time's up. That it is. Alright, that's enough of this for the time being. While we're heading to the Pokemon Center... Down at the bottom of the screen is all of my patrons. And, um, like I said, next time, go to the dojo, hang out at Cycling Road. Just to say we did something other than go to the Safari Zone. And then maybe we'll go to the Safari Zone. Let's see here. Go ahead and, uh... Release that Kingaskon now. Not going to train one, like I said earlier. Would probably prefer having a Kingaskon that had Dizzy Punch in later generations, since Dizzy Punch in later later generations allows you to make a Pokemon confused. 
but not in this generation, so... Goodbye, Kinex Clan. I know where to find one in Generation 2. So don't need to keep it for that. Alright, that takes care of that. Go ahead and save again. And I will end this stream. Thank you guys for watching. It was somewhat enjoyable. A lot of time wasted hunting for that Scyther, but hey, I can't complain too much. Got a freaking chancy.